Yes, hello students. You are welcome once again to this e-facilitation class for AMP 506, Animal Health and Diseases. Yes, uh, we have had, uh, okay, let me first introduce myself. Okay, you should know me by now, even though uh, students have not been attending classes, but I've been on here. And uh, my name is Dr. Biomi Bankoli. I have been your course facilitator for AMP 506. Yes, that's animal health and diseases. Now, we have had two sessions of uh, facilitation classes, live classes, uh, in the last three weeks. Today will be the third class. And so we are progressing gradually. And uh, to this class will be an interesting one. So I welcome you on board. So let me simply share my screen so we can move on. Yes, yeah, so share screen. There we have. Yes, yeah, so we have the topic before us. Uh, and that topic says the general classification of livestock diseases, their prevention, control, and eradication strategies. Last week, before we move on to this, let me remind you about uh, what we quickly mentioned, I mean, uh, dealt with last week. Last week, uh, we look at the factors that affect the health status of our animals. And in that class, I uh, were able to classify the, those factors into two major categories. And the first one uh, was an, it was, we call it environmental factors. While the second is management factors. And the, under those, we were able to list a number of factors uh, for our discussion. So you need to get into that uh, uh, video, if you get the video of that class to be able to uh, understand better. So today, if we do not look at those factors, some of them may result into diseases. And in most cases, they will result into diseases. And so that's why we are looking at the general classification of livestock diseases. We want to look at how we can prevent these diseases, as well as the control and eradication uh, strategies. So by way of introduction, say that a disease, given a definition of disease now, a disease can be described as a condition that results in the deviation from the normal functional or behavioral status of an animal. Now, disease can either be infectious or non-infectious. So it's not all diseases that are uh, infectious. So we have injuries, we have poisons, we have other sources uh, of uh, diseases that are not necessarily uh, uh, infectious. Now, infectious diseases are those diseases that are caused by pathogenic microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungi. And this organism invades an animal's body and can spread from one animal to another, either directly or indirectly. Now, non-infectious diseases, on the other hand, are caused by are not, sorry, caused by pathogens, rather a result from nutritional deficiencies, the environment, or may actually be inherited or genetic. Now, we have three major intended learning outcomes in this class. Number one, at the end of today's class, we expected to know the major classification of livestock diseases. 
you have to, number two, understand uh, the methods of disease transmission in animals. And lastly, uh, to identify the prevention, control, and eradication strategies to curtail these diseases. All right. Now, let's look at causes of disease. Diseases are caused mostly by pathogenic microorganisms or parasites which invade, colonize, and mul multiply within the host cells, see the animal cells, thereby causing a significant change in the body. Now, these pathogens, as we mentioned earlier, can be bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa, or even a parasite. It is important to note that the first man to ever associate a specific microorganism uh, with a particular disease was Robert Couch in 1877. Now, he attributed the disease anthrax to the organism called Bacillus anthracis. So, so from then, we have several, several diseases that have been associated to diseases. Now, there are other causes of diseases which include injuries, poisons, or chemicals, poor nutrition, or from genetic origin, as we earlier mentioned. Now, the manner in which diseases develop, that is, the pathogenesis, they differ from one uh, disease to another. Now, shall we look at methods of disease transmission? Yes. Now, diseases are transmitted from one animal to another through the following ways. Number one, by contact transmission. What do we mean by that? This is actually direct contact. So it can happen by direct contact between animals that are staying together in the hard or floor when they meet in open field during uh, grazing or even at the animal markets. Now, it can also be indirect. So it is either direct as contact or indirect. So the indirect one happens when animals come in contact with other objects that a sick animal had contact with. Now, this object can be non-living, that is formites, such as syringes, boots, warm attendants, feeding trough, pasture, and so on and so forth. Now, the number two method, major method of this transmission is vehicular transmission. Now, this type of transmission occurs uh, through a medium that can be through feed or water or air or fluid. Now, the third method of disease transmission is vector transmission. Yes. Now, this type of transmission refers to other animals that carry disease-causing agents from one host to another. And the majority of these are insects or arthropods. Now, they transmit pathogenic microorganisms and or parasites either mechanically or biologically. Now, in mechanical transmission or vector uh, transmission, they passively carry the pathogen on their body parts. That is, uh, for, for example, in butulism, butulism, where maggot feed on carcasses and transmit uh, the disease to susceptible hosts or not. Now, in biological transfer, on the other hand, the, it, this happens by biting action or part of the life cycle of pathogen occurring within the body of the vector. Now, example of this, of course, in transfer of malaria and mosquito or trypanosomosis uh, by sense fly. Now, let's go to the meat of today's discussion, and that is classification of livestock diseases. You know, that's a major heading we have today, but we need to create that background for us to understand how disease occur. So, livestock diseases can be classified using different criteria depending on what best satisfies the situation under consideration. Therefore, the disease can be 
classified based on a number of criteria, majorly three of them. Now, it can be classified based on species of animal. So you will be hearing things like avian diseases that is in bed, bovine diseases that is in cow, or uh, animals in that species, equine uh, diseases that is horses, uh, caprine diseases, so goats, canine diseases, as dog, so on and so forth. Now, the second classification is by system of the body affected. So you hear things like cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases, renal diseases, reproductive diseases, and so on and so forth. So the third one is by etiology. So we say it is classified based on the etiology and etiology simply means a causative organism. All right. So we need to know, however, that the etiology of causative organism is the most widely used method of this is classification. So under this, we have what well, we we'll just we'll classify uh, some of them. Uh, we'll give examples. So number one here, we have bacterial diseases. So each of a bacterial disease is salmonellosis, foul typhoid, anthrax. You know, we mentioned anthrax earlier, mastitis, and so on. So these are all bacteria. So they are. Number two, viral diseases. Example include foot and mouth disease, rinderpes, African swine fever. Number three, protozoan diseases. So we hear things like Oxidiosis, trypanosomosis, uh, babesiosis, and so on and so forth. Number four, rickettsia disease. That's another classification. So, example of rickettsia include anas anaplasmosis, caudriosis, that's ash water, infectious keratoconjunctivitis, and so on and so forth. So, number five here is fungal disease. An example will include. Aspergillosis, ringworm, epizootic lymphangitis, and so on and so forth. Then, number six, we have endoparasitic diseases such as parsioliosis, hemonchosis, and so on and so forth. Number seven, ectoparasitic diseases. The first one, the number six, is endo. Now we are talking of ecto. So, and these are simply caused by ticks, lice. And fleas because they are in the body. So examples are mange, fleet uh, bite, uh, dermatitis, and so on and so forth. So we also have deficiency diseases, and examples include vitamin deficiency, uh, pregnancy, toxemia and growth, uh, athlete uh, pregnancy, then you hear ketosis, and so on and so forth. Number nine. We have toxicosis. So, example of toxicosis include nitrate poisoning, lead poisoning, so on and so forth. So, we have a class activity, uh, and let me just chip this in. So, the question here for you is analyze three major criteria uh, used in classifying livestock disease and emphasize on the most widely adopted criteria. All right. You can do that, and then we'll be revisiting that probably in the next class. So, we we'll go to the next aspect and probably the concluding part of today's class, and that is the prevention, control, and eradication of livestock diseases. So, we we'll want to see how we can control this disease. So, what do we mean by control? Uh, be prevention. So let's start with that. Prevention, uh, in this sense, simply means avoiding the disease. Then what do you mean by control? Control refers to reduction in the disease incidence or prevalence. And then eradication means the complete removal of a disease from an area, from a ge geographical area. All right. 
So, shall we look at methods of prevention? In two major ones. We have quarantine and we have vaccination. So, we start with quarantine. And this is the physical separation of healthy animals from sick or new animals. Uh, also, movement from items are restricted between these two groups of animals. All new animals to be added to a farm or herd are meant to be quarantined, tested, and or treated appropriately before introduction into the farm or herd. Now, we have very strict quarantine practice. The head is completely close to live animals and the uh, even by way of by uh, uh, and in reproduction, for instance, artificial insemination uh, is usually employed, it's used. So the second aspect of prevention, category of prevention, is vaccination, method of prevention, vaccination. Now this method is used where exposure to a disease is likely, and it hope that vaccination will protect the animal if and when exposed. Now, vaccination is based on the principle of herd immunity and suppression of disease. When individual animals are resistant, all animals are vaccinated using suitable vaccines. Now, a vaccine is a biological uh, substance which stimulates the body's immune system to produce antibodies. Now, vaccination should be done as close as possible to the period of greater risk of the animals. Uh, to the disease being vaccinated again. Vaccination should not be carried out during period of stress on the animals. Disease commonly vaccinated against Nigeria include rinderpest, pests, anthrax, contagious bovine pneumonia in cattle, foul typhoid, of course, uh, Newcastle disease, foul pox, all in poultry, and rabies in dogs. So, Shall we look at methods for control? How do we control the disease? We have seen prevention, let's talk of control. Now, control methods are aimed at reducing disease to a level that is tolerable or economically feasible. Now, the goal or goals for control include this to decrease uh, the prevalence of an existing disease, or two, to decrease the incidence of new infection, and number four, and three, to decrease or reduce the morbidity and fatality rate. Now, these are achieved by identifying infected animals or herd, and this is followed by treatment. So, number one way of uh, control method disease is treatment. All infected animals promptly treated with appropriate therapeutic. Agents. Now, this method depends on the availability of cheap and safe drugs. Uh, use of broad spectrum antibiotics and antihermetics are useful in achieving mass treatment. Then, number two, sanitation by hygiene. Now, proper hygienic practices that will ensure and maintain a clean environment where animals are housed must be practiced. Clean water and proper feeding troughs. Are meant to be provided speaker uh, contamination of feed and water, usually viable source of infection. Now, for grazing animals, this will include rotation of the grazing areas. Of course, the aim of eradication, but we are into method for eradication. So, the main aim of eradication is to eliminate a disease completely from your heart or geographical area. Now, generally, the means of achieving this I mean, disease eradication is by depopulation. That's a major, major way. So what do we mean by depopulation? Now, depopulation is used normally another means of eradicating a disease or preventing a disease are not likely to achieve the desired result. And when the disease in question will have a devastating consequence. Now, also, it is used to completely stamp out the disease. It requires that all animals of species concerned in a particular area of farm 
be killed or destroyed. So that is uh, the population. And the methods work best in developing countries like uh, Nigeria when implementation is compulsory and is initiated and supervised by the government with compensation plan for the affected farmers. Now, the destruction can be total or limited. When limited destruction of animal is to be applied, it is preceded by testing to identify affected animals to be destroyed. This is known as test and slaughter or test and removal. This method relies on the use of sensitive diagnostic tests to identify animals uh, to be removed and the economic cost of the removal. So we have another class activity, and uh, it simply goes, identify the fact major strategies commonly used in the prevention control and eradication of livestock diseases. All right, so this makes us come to the end of today's class. But in summary, what have we discussed? In today's class, I've been able to Number one, classify livestock diseases based on different criteria. And we have emphasized the etiology method as a widely accepted method. We also describe the various modes of transmission, livestock diseases, and the, the method uh, by way of the transmission. Then lastly, we were able to identify the conventional strategies for disease prevention, control, and eradication. All right. So, we have come to the end of today's class. So, we will meet in the next class. But please, please, uh, students have not been attending classes. I will plead with you to attend classes. And if you are unable to eventually attend the class, we have these classes recorded. So uh, on the platform, uh, that is a virtual learning uh, platform environment, you will find these uh, uh, recorded versions there for your use. So make use, avail yourself of that opportunity. All right, so till we meet in the next class, See my